My name is Terry Adams. This video is about my life, my riding, and my career as a BMX Flatlander. As a kid, my dream was always to be a pro rider. After watching Flatland for the first time, I was hooked. As I stared at the riders, I felt like I was dreaming because the tricks they were doing just looked impossible. From that point on, all I wanted to do was learn as many tricks as I could. The more I rode, the more I fell in love with it. Flatland became an addiction to me. It's been the passion in my life for as long as I can remember. After a lot of riding and a lot of hard work, I now live my dream as a pro rider. Flatland has made me who I am today, and that is something that I'm very proud of. As I take you on my personal journey, open your mind and allow your dreams to become reality. I grew up in a very small town that most people would consider the country. All the kids played in the woods, rode horses, dirt bikes, and spent most of their free time climbing trees. When I decided to start riding BMX, I thought it was pretty normal to ride on gravel, dirt roads, and even in ditches. It was always difficult for me to keep the kids in my neighborhood motivated to ride bikes because they had dreams of being doctors, lawyers, and even dentists. I remember countless times begging them to come outside and ride because I had one thing in mind. I wanted to be a pro BMX rider. I spent my entire childhood riding my bike and dreaming of someday having enough skill to be in the magazines, compete with the pros, and more than anything, I just wanted to be a great rider. I sometimes think about all my success and give thanks to that small town life. Living and riding in a small town gave me motivation, passion, and endless time to really focus on what I wanted in life without any distractions. As a professional bike rider today, I take great pride in the town I came from and I always encourage the kids in my area to chase their dreams and never give up.
As a child, I grew up with a few difficulties in my life. My father left my mother when I was just three years old. She was forced to take care of me as a young single mom. I was also a kid with severe asthma. I spent many years of my childhood taking allergy shots, sitting in hot steam showers, and taking different treatments just to be able to breathe. I was constantly missing school and considered the Children's Hospital in New Orleans my second home. He missed 43 days and we was turned into the truancy office. The best thing for Terry in, in order for a child like that is to always build up his tolerance so even though he would be struggling with his breathing on and off, the more that you let him out and the more that he would experience different things, eventually he was able to grow out some of those medical issues. About the time I started to wing the asthma, I was diagnosed with dyslexia in the third grade. Learning the simplest things in school became nearly impossible for me because I was reading everything backwards. I was not able to follow directions and sometimes I was not able to read at all. Even telling time on a clock with hands seemed nearly impossible for me. In elementary school, there are really lots of signs that you could see with a student who's having dyslexia, but one of the things you're going to see is they're going to have difficulty in writing. Their handwriting is going to be difficult to read. They may have difficulty sounding out basic words. They may have memorization issues like kids learn their basic sight words or basic addition, subtraction, multiplication facts. Those kids are going to have a lot of difficulty with those kinds of things. They, a lot of times, are going to say they don't like school and they can't really say why. It's because they're not understanding a lot of what they're being asked to do on a daily basis. As Terry reached the first grade, he began to struggle with his grades. So Terry's teacher requested that he be sent back to kindergarten because she felt like he was too immature and he didn't recognize his words and his letters. One of the things you don't want to say to parents is you, you really got to be more specific. You can't just give a blanket statement like he has a problem. You really have to say he has a problem spelling. He has a problem writing. I decided that I didn't want to send him back to kindergarten so I decided to have him retained to the first grade. And as he was retained his second year in the first grade, he was requested to have a 504 evaluation. We concluded that he would just remain in the first grade and he didn't qualify for services because he was like borderline between uh, his word recognitions, which was later recognized to be dyslexia. My mom decided to pull me out of school in the seventh grade. I was in homeschool through my entire high school years. In those same years, my biological dad passed away. Harry is my only child from a previous relationship. His dad's name is Terry Wilson. Uh, we was together several years, and then after Terry was born, we had split up. So Terry would see him on and off, but he basically lived in Chicago. Uh, he passed away when Terry was 12 years old. At times when I was feeling down or depressed, I focused on the things that made me happy in life, which was riding my bike and building hopes and dreams in my head that would soon become a reality. Most students with dyslexia are going to be very successful, usually if you catch it early on. I think it's really important for the parents to get behind their children and support them in every way they can. With Terry, I was very proud of him. Just the hard work and the dedication that he put into all of his riding and how hard he tried and everything and made me really feel proud about being his father and everything. Having a mom and stepdad that supported me is a huge reason I have achieved my goals. My mom spent many years of her life teaching me at home and giving me all the learning skills that I now use in everyday life. My stepdad drove me to flatland contests all over the United States. This gave me the opportunity to stay motivated and keep pushing for what I really wanted. My parents believed in me and let me chase my dreams. For that, I am very thankful for because it has changed my life forever. To help Flatland grow, getting media coverage in magazines is very important.
Being a professional rider, it's critical that my face shows up in as many magazines as possible. Terry wanted the most epic photos you'd ever seen. And so me and him set out to just compile the most epic and amazing flatland photos and unique flatland photos that anybody had ever seen. One of the ideas I had for a photo was at the top of this abandoned building I knew of. Uh, we got up there and it was kind of difficult to show that we were actually on top of an abandoned building. So we kind of had to make do, but then Terry was like, I'm just going to go right at the edge of this sucker. And uh, he ended up, I don't even know what the trick was called, but his bike was hanging over this like 14 story building, you know, traffic passing under us. It was absolutely wild. Well, you know, as a lot of people know, like photography is such a big part of BMX now anyway. So many people have taken it up and there's so many good photographers and to come up with a, an aesthetically pleasing shot it, it makes all the sense in the world to me to shoot a flatland shot where the background in and of itself makes for a good shot because then you can insert flatland into it and whether or not somebody would normally be riding a flatland up on a mountain is beside the point it it gets exposure to flatland it also puts a cool photo into the magazine after a while, I realized that Flatland had not been on the cover of Ride Magazine for at least 10 years. I had a goal. I wanted to get that cover, not only for myself, but for the future of Flatland. It all started with an email to the head photographer of Ride Magazine. Hi, my name is Jeff Zielinski. I'm a staff photographer for Ride BMX Magazine, and I'm here to shed some light on the uh, Terry Adams Ride Cover. About a month prior to the actual shoot, Terry sent me an email telling me that he had a, a new trick that was pretty wild, and he's like, you know, what do you think the odds are of getting a cover? And our, our usual policy is just like, well, we can never guarantee anything until we shoot the photos and see what happens. So regardless of that, anyway, I told him, yeah, well, you know, come out and we'll just shoot it and, and see what happens, you know, you never know where it may end up. On the day of the uh, of the shoot, I went out a little earlier and uh, did some location scouting, and I found the building that you see in the background, and I thought that would be a cool scene to shoot the photo. But the, the sidewalk is terrible, you know, it wasn't a very even surface, which is usually a prerequisite for flatland photos. But uh, Terry always prevails in those circumstances. Terry showed me the move, Katrina, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's pretty wild, you know? Like, if I can hold on my end and shoot a cool photo, this, this could end up being on the cover, you know? It was as good a time as any to get like a really progressive flatlander on the cover. BMX is composed mostly of other forms of riding, of uh, supposed to flatland, but you know, when something that great comes along, um, we're definitely going to recognize it. That was perfect. That cover was really visually stimulating to me. Like, I looked at it multiple times during the day. I had it in front of my television on the coffee table. I saw it first thing when I woke up, you know. It was something that inspired me. Um, deeper than the trick and the colors too, but you know, those what, were what grabbed me and I think they would grab a newcomer too, someone that wasn't necessarily a flatlander. They would see that and be curious and want to be a part of it or get into it, you know? When I got the magazine in the mail and saw the cover, I was so stoked because you hadn't seen Flatland on a, on a cover in ages. As with any kind of professional sport, there's two sides to it. There's the actual activity, the sport itself, and also the business side of it. And Terry has shown like, not only dedication in trying to do tricks and progress at riding, but also progress at the business side of it. He's always ready to do shows. He's always ready to set up the photo shoot or the video shoot. He's already, he's always ready to take Flatland where it's never been before.
After I got the cover, it opened my eyes to so many things. I then realized I could do anything my mind could dream up. Anything I could dream up was destined to come true if I believed it could happen. The other cover I wanted to appear on was BMX Plus magazine. I wanted this cover to prove to everyone that flatland riding was still around and here to stay. I knew it was possible, so I started the process by calling Ben Crockett. One of the most important aspects for a rider or a company is to get the cover. We get a lot of companies calling and going, what do we got to do to get the cover? And I tell them all the same thing. It can be the biggest company in the world or it can be the smallest no-name rider in the world. It's always just about producing a good photo, a cool new trick. I want to do a cover because the image warrants the cover. It's an image, it's a cool photo that people look at it and makes them want to pick up the magazine. As an, as an editor and a photographer, that's my job. I got to make people want to pick up that magazine. Terry called, said, you know, I want to, I want to shoot something, but we weren't going out to shoot for the cover. We were just going out to shoot a good photo. And so we drove all over the place trying to find anything cool wall, cool graffiti, cool landmark, a structure, anything that's kind of a cool backdrop. Which is one of my favorite things about shooting flat, is you can take it to any place that's got a cool background and make it look good. The trick he was doing, I, he'd only pulled off once or twice, and after seeing him try it once, I knew it was definitely had some photo potential. When we went to shoot it, generally the hardest thing with flatland specifically, and most tricks in general, is catching the trick at peak action. Which for this trick, specifically, it was catching Terry when he was completely off the bike. His feet were off the bike, hands not quite grabbing the seat yet, and his other arm was thrown back, full extension. Getting that image, we shot this trick probably 50 times, and he crashed probably about 48 times. And the one time he stuck it was the one time we got perfect extension completely off the bike, which is, really lucky just catching it that split second and that's all you can do shoot a lot of photos and hope you catch the right one at the right time and it worked out so when we started building the cover it was a really big issue for us because it had our rider of the year buyer's guide the beginning of our olympic our olympic points chase coverage uh, so it was a really big issue for us and I don't want to say it was a gamble because I was really into the image, but it was taking a reach. It was kind of getting outside of our comfort zone as far as street and dirt jumping covers um, to do something different on an issue that is proven to be one of our one of our top sellers. And ultimately, just by giving me a phone call, we went out and shot this in an afternoon. It took us about an hour and a half, and it ended up being one of our biggest sellers in recent history. Uh, just blowing all of our other covers out of the water, which was awesome. Which was, you know, it was it was a great turnaround for us, and it was brought around by nothing more than calling up and saying, "Hey, let's go shoot a photo." Like within the BMX industry, you know, Flatland is only like five percent. It's a you know, it's a small percentage of the whole industry, so it's not very often that you see Flatland in the media, and especially on the cover. To see. Terry take it to that level, not just with like something that was had already been done, you know. What I noticed was that he like had this goal and he decided that he was gonna do a new innovative creative trick that, you know, looked cool on the cover and he he accomplished that goal and that's real motivating to me. But Terry's taken the flatland well by a storm, you know, you see him everywhere on adverts on TV and stuff, magazine coverage is awesome that somebody can contribute to the scene like that. We need more people like that that can share their passion and enthusiasm. Just share it with people, it's awesome. It probably inspires people to keep riding and progressing, which is exactly what you need.
winning a competition is one thing, but being on the cover of a magazine, that's something that's timeless. People are never going to forget that. Terry kept pushing me to try and get a cover uh, on one of these magazines because I think he really doesn't care who's on the cover. He just wants Flatland to grow. And whether it's him, it's me, whoever is on the cover, if Flatland's on there, that is good for Flatland. To be able to put um, something into this small part of the industry and just give it a positive light, something that could attract other people to it, I think was really cool, man, and it's gonna benefit Flatland, you know, in the long run. Every time a Flatland image appears in a magazine or on a TV screen, or every time somebody does a show or a performance or a contest goes down, it's gonna help Flatland grow. And Terry has shown the utmost dedication and motivation to get Flatland as many places as possible. Along with being in magazines, I've also had to learn to talk to the media in front of cameras, at events, and on television. I thought being married to a pro boom x -Ray was going to be this fun, exciting, high energy life, but it's really a lot of late night practicing, trips three times a week, never seeing them, and when he's home, he's practicing morning, nighttime when I get home from work, so really it's kind of a lonely life because he's always, he's always on the road, he's always practicing. Being a professional athlete, it's very important that you sell your image to the public. Building a name for myself took many years of media coverage and interviews, but after a lot of hard work, I've built a name for myself in this industry. I'm very proud to be in the position that I'm in. I'm able to ride my bike and get paid for it. For me, this is a dream come true. The passion that you know Flatlanders have for their sport is uh, something that that you know really drew me in um, because you know of the way that I feel about photography. Um, seeing somebody that was so into what they love to do um, just just clicked with me. I emailed Terry and wanted to shoot him for a series I was doing, ironically, called Dreams. And you know, he was completely game for it. We went, we started shooting, and from there it just took off. Uh, I love shooting Flatland because it's something that I can uh, I can relate to. Um, you know, in photography, it's all about creativity. It's all about creating your own look and expressing yourself. 
and I feel like the riders are doing the same thing. Um, you go to these contests and you see them and they all have their own different style and they all have their own different tricks that they create. I can't think of anything better than to be shooting somebody who's creating their own thing, who's you know living you know what they're doing and then being able to collaborate with that and uh, put my view into their view and just have you know just a you know great picture showing two lives and two lifestyles that are that are put together um, into one image. One of my favorite shots that Tara and I did was for a, an article about Terry Adams at home and um, uh, the particular photo is one of him cutting his grass and he's on his bike pushing his lawnmower and of course he doesn't go out on Saturdays and cut his grass while riding his bike but it's it's the the meaning behind the picture it's to say you know that that whenever Terry wakes up he's thinking about flatland when he goes to bed he's thinking about flatland I think that's how a lot of the riders are they're passionate about what they do and it's not just uh, something that they go out for a couple hours a day and they go home and do something else but something that you know all day every day it's what they think about it's what they dream about it's you know what they live for and uh, and it really shows and that's what I like to, to show in the photos it's more than just a great a great trick or a great move but it's um, it's a lifestyle
80s, early 90s, it was, uh, you went out, you did your run, um, and people would look at the run and they did like do a little hand clap, that was nice. It was, there was no connection between the rider and the spectators. So nowadays it seems as though the riding has progressed in a way that people can connect and really get excited about the riding. So the crowd gets hyped up on what the riders are doing and the riders feel the crowd and it's just a, a back and forth mix that creates for a wonderful atmosphere. Because of Flatland contests, I have been given the opportunity to go all over the world. France, Canada, Mexico, and Amsterdam are just some of the places I've traveled to because of Flatland. Flatland Freestyle is like a universal language where you can meet guys from other countries that you would never meet. Flatland can be found like all around the planet. You can be involved in the sport today no matter what discipline you ride. There's so many people that are good, there's so many contests, so much going on. The sport's as big and as good as it's ever been. I have a lot of pressure on me because my sponsors need me to place well. The pressure is always intense because I am competing against the best riders in the world. Terry's a very hard guy to compete against in the way the battle format works these days. Uh, I really think it's, it helps really the competition to, to be good when, when we battle together because I, the crowd, the rider, it gives the competition as a, another aspect. The one thing that gets me pumped is the large crowds. I get excited because I know they are there to watch Flatland. Most of the time, I forget about the pressure and do what I love most ride and show as much emotion on the contest floor as I can. Sometimes I'm in the zone so much all I can think about is pumping up the riders, the judges, and everyone around. I get lost in the noise of the crowd and I just know that I'm going to pull my hardest tricks. Some of my greatest moments in life have been from being on the contest floor and doing what I love, riding Flatland. Basically, Terry is one of the most dialed riders there is. Adaptability is one of Terry's strong points, I think, and also, that also goes with his combos, which is why I think it's hard for people to ride against him. All the way, Terry Adams. Believing in yourself is just as important as practicing for a contest. If you're not confident with yourself, you cannot expect to accomplish your goals. My goal has always been to win. I train very hard before every event. And for good reason. I need to be on the podium to prove to myself that I'm giving it everything I got. There's a time in your career when nobody knows who the hell you are and you kind of got the underdog status thing. Cherish those moments, because once people know who you are, the expectations go way up. I have met some of my closest friends through Flatland and that is something that I will never forget. I have friends in all parts of the world and we share something very special. 
Every time we session, we cherish the simple fact that Flatland has brought us together, and we ride that much harder. around 13 years old. I remember just seeing it on TV and just thought it was the most amazing, unique thing I had ever seen. The feeling that you get just watching someone ride, sharing the same passion as you, is just truly motivating and inspiring to uh, just watch someone, you know, do what you love to do as well. And I already have a connection with those people even if I've never seen them before in my life, they're experiencing and have a love for the same thing that I do. One thing about Flatland that's really cool is you make your connections. So, you know, we all have friends around the country and around the globe. And it's really nice to, you know, link back up with people like Stephen Hearn. You know, here in Louisiana, we just, we're here session in the backyard. I haven't seen this guy ride in two years and busting out all kinds of new tricks. It's just so motivating, you know, to see, see people you haven't seen in a while, see how much they're busting out, and it just pushes you to progress. And you want to always progress your life, if it's riding or studying or anything. As long as you're moving forward, moving up, nothing can go wrong. The feeling I get after trying a trick for so long and just finally pulling that trick, no one can understand it unless they're a Flatlander. Sitting out in a parking lot, riding all day, you know, to some people may seem crazy, but to Flatlander, it's, you know, it's life. It's, it's, it's what, you know, I feel it's what I'm here for, and I'm sure that's how other Flatlanders feel too. Flatland's such an interesting and diverse sport, you know, because all of us, we come from different backgrounds, different ways of life, different upbringing, and here we are all doing tricks on bikes and having fun, you know. That's what it's about. It's all about hanging out with your friends, doing tricks, have a fun. Flatland not only has given me, you know, the ability to travel and meet friends and experience things, but it's also helped me in life in general. It's just, I've had some hard times and it's been a positive outlet and 
it's become a part of me. It's when I wake up in the morning, it's the first thing I think of. When I get off work, it's the first thing I want to do. And I, I dream about it at night and just experiencing Flatland, you know, I'm so thankful for it. Another interesting thing about Flatland is how many different directions you can take your riding and your lifestyle and how it's going to influence how you live. Riding Flatland for 10 years is show you you can do anything you want. And when you open up possibilities in your mind, then there's no limits. You can do anything you want. Whatever goal you set, you're going to achieve it. So if you want to take your riding in one direction, do the contest thing, try to get your corporate sponsors, you got every opportunity to do that. If you want to take a def different direction, that's up to you too. You know, I graduated university, didn't want to put on a suit and tie, so bought this van, just been rolling out with my bike ever since. You know, for me, my goal is just live a free, free life. This is freestyle. This is Flatland. The times that I remember most are riding with my closest friends throughout the night. Without a care in the world, we let hours pass us by. While we watch each other ride, there is one thing for sure. We love our sport, our passion, but most importantly, our friendship. Watching an artist paint in front of you is the only way I can describe the feeling of watching Flatland in person. Taking turns and staring at my friend Ride, I can feel his undenying love, his strength, and his determination for Flatland. From the outside, it appears to be guys messing around on bikes. It's actually guys that have been friends their entire lives, brought together by an art form that very few know about. Pushing each other to combine tricks, positions, and links that have never been done before. These are the special moments I will remember until the day I die. I once again have Flatland to thank for this part of my life. It's not all about practicing for contests. I do love to go out and ride for the reasons that got me into Flatland. Sometimes I just get on my bike and remember why I started. It was about me being able to have an ability that not too many people had. It was about me pushing myself to do something that most people thought was impossible. When I was young and learned a new trick, I seriously felt like I had superpowers. I've been riding 13 years and I can still go out and get that feeling. It's one thing to have a hobby and do it whenever you get the urge, but what I have for Flatland is a passion. It runs in my veins and pumps through my heart, and that shows every time I ride.
I got where I am today by chasing my childhood dreams. If I could give any advice to anyone in this lifetime, it would be to keep your dreams alive. So take what you love and make it your own. I hope you can use my story as motivation and just remember if you stay positive and believe in yourself that anything is possible. Dreams don't count, do they? They don't count. <laughs> Unless you make it come true. <laughs>